Hello everyone and welcome to my home. My name is Jessica Tiarina and this is episode four of Jessica's Kitchen Tips, Tricks, and Hacks. Now, it's snowing outside, again. Um, you know, first couple weeks of April, we're kind of hoping that with that green coming up in the ground that we don't see any more of this white. Not that I don't love winter, don't get me wrong, I love winter. But I'm ready for some green, for some sunshine, for some warmth, you know, maybe getting out, doing some bike riding, who knows. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Again, like I said, this is episode four of Jessica's Kitchen Tips, Tricks, and Hacks. Uh, today is going to be about a latte. A latte things. So we're gonna do a hot latte, an iced latte. Uh, we're going to show you how to make and froth the milk or milk product that you choose to use without using an espresso machine. I happen to have one, but I thought not everybody does, and I certainly didn't always have one. So how on earth could I make that frothy goodness, which is the best part of a vanilla latte, in my opinion, without having an espresso machine and that milk frother? Now you can buy the machines, you can buy those battery operated little whisks, you can have all those crazy kind of gadgets, or you can use what you already have in your home, which is one of my favorite things to be able to do, is to show people those kitchen tricks and hacks that you may not know that you already currently own to make your life a little more simple. And today, just a little more fancy. Um, uh, my boyfriend yesterday had asked for a vanilla latte out of the blue, asked if I knew how to make one. He wanted something a little sugary, which he normally doesn't do. So I got to work and I, started up my espresso machine and I made it and then I was like, you know what? Not everybody has one of these. Not everybody has an espresso machine with the milk frother. Now I didn't always have one, like I said. So I got to thinking about how else we could possibly make this happen to get that frothy goodness on top of your latte, whether it be an iced latte or a hot latte. So this morning I wanted a hot latte. I wanted a dirty chai vanilla hot latte. This afternoon, after that snow stops, and that snow stops coming down, and the sun shines out, and it's beautiful, I might want an iced latte. Of course, you can make these decaf, but why? Uh, so what I want to show you guys is a couple different ways that I did this, and some really cool hacks along the way. Now pay attention, because there's quite a few of those kitchen hacks in here. Of course, you can go back and watch it later, but I want to show you how this is done. So, hi guys, hi Kate, hi Holly, hi Kayla, hi Rachel, everybody watching, thank you for jumping in, appreciate it. Um, what I did is what I started with some instant espresso. Uh, I buy Trader Joe's Colombian uh, instant 100% coffee. It is my favorite, it is stronger than anything. I think I make it too strong usually, but now I'm used to it, so you know. And clearly I've had way too much today. So I start with about, for making about two large vanilla lattes, I start with about a quarter cup of espresso to a, about three cups of hot water. So you can see this steaming hopefully, this is really hot water. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that into um, this and you usually do about a one third to two third ratio. So one third of espresso or really strong coffee. You don't have to have espresso either. Um, you can just make a pot of really strong coffee uh, and that is good enough for anybody. Decaf again, you could do that too. Um, and you can use um, espresso powder or just your regular espresso too. So I'm gonna do about one third of this cute little glass that I found of this hot coffee, okay? about one third of that in there. Now the first way I'm gonna show you to froth that milk is with something that a lot of people have, but again, not everybody. So this is gonna show you a lot of different ways and variations on this. This, my friends, is a press, okay? It's a French press. Now for this, because I'm making a hot latte, I wanted to heat up my milk a little bit. I'm using almond milk. You can use soy milk, 2% whole, nut-based, whatever you have. So I'm gonna do about a cup of that milk. I heated it up pretty warm. And I'm gonna put it in here. And I'm just gonna 
shake that up a little bit. And you don't even need to fill it all the way. You just fill it about to where that, um, where the press stops, because just pumping all that air through those really tiny little holes that you make espresso coffee with is gonna create that aeration needed. And it's not like I'm lifting weights here. I'm actually not even working that hard to get this to where it needs to be. The best part of our, about this that I found out yesterday when I did it was that once you froth this, that froth stays frothy for a really long time, like hours and hours in my refrigerator. It was pretty crazy. Um, so I went to town a little bit on this. So now it's about half froth and half milk in here. It's coming out the top a little bit. Oh man. So you, clearly you don't want this to be really hot or that would not have been a good thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lift this out of there. Okay, it's real frothy on the top. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna to try to bring this a little bit closer to you guys. Yeah, that sun's kind of beaten down. You can't really see it. So it's kind of thick. And I'm gonna use this fun little spoon that I have. Thank you, a good friend of mine for getting this, Nicole. Uh, it's got little holes in it, so it's gonna actually pour, let's see, I'm gonna pour the milk in there. And that froth just kind of sits on top of that spoon real nice like. Okay. And then depending on how much of that froth you want, Oh yeah, that is so nice and thick and it's just sitting on the top of this as well. Nice and thick. Look at that. I didn't have to work that hard for it. I didn't have to really wait for it. And I certainly didn't pay $5.75 for it. So you could use something like a coconut creamer as well and give it a little bit of a fun twist as far as flavor goes. Now what I like to do is I like to just rub a little bit of cinnamon right over the top. Now it's super fancy. And look at that, it is just gorgeous. You can see the tone in that, the colors. See that, it's like the coffee, the cream and the froth. Little bit of cinnamon on the top. Mmm, not that I needed that, but it is delicious. Uh, and I certainly did make that espresso very strong. Uh, so now I want to show you another way to make a latte. And again, you can interchange these to iced or hot. Um, so for the cold latte, we're going to go ahead and use a different glass. Um, you want to use a highball if you want, if you will. Uh, I'm going to use just a shorty just because I didn't really need to make that much coffee for myself because I will drink it all day long and then never go to sleep. So what you want to do is you want to throw some ice in the cup. In the cup. Now I teased you guys a little bit when I told you I was going to do this at one o'clock because it's after lunch, we're a little sleepy and we need a little pick me up. Now if you prefer iced lattes or iced coffees, you know that when you get them from your local coffee shop, whatever that may be, that they throw a bunch of ice in there. It's usually more ice than coffee and cream and everything like that. And by the time you're halfway done drinking it, it's mostly water and it tastes really not that great, in my opinion. I mean, if you like watery coffee, hey, that's fine, drink watery coffee. But I don't love it that way. So this is what I have done. I took some of that espresso yesterday that I made and using a turkey baster, I basted a whole bunch of ice cubes. This is just straight espresso ice cubes. Kitchen hack, kitchen tip, so genius, blowing my mind. So we're gonna fill this glass with as many ice cubes as we can because it is a small glass, sorry guys. Um, Let's see, we'll do, we'll do three. We'll do three big ice cubes in there, maybe, if I can get them out. Maybe not. There we go. Three ice cubes. So cool. All right. Hey, Karen. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for joining us, guys. 
All right, so these are the just espresso ice cubes. So when your coffee starts to melt with the ice, you'd still have good coffee, not watered down coffee. Genius. Okay, so we have espresso ice cubes. We're gonna pour some, unfortunately, some hot espresso in there, but those ice cubes are pretty big. All right, so this, I didn't go with the one third to two third ratio for this because of the ice cubes, there'd be hardly any coffee in there, which is okay because those ice cubes are coffee. Um, but I'm gonna do the same thing. And instead of using my, for those of you that joined, you guys missed that we made frothed milk any kind of milk based, almond, nut based, soy, whole milk, 2%, whatever, we froth that in this guy, okay? In a French press, we just put about a cup, a cup and a half of that milk in here, and we just pushed it down several times, let it aerate, and poof. Not only do you have thick, thicker milk in there, but you have this beautiful thick froth for the top of your coffee. So for those of you guys that missed that, that was the first way. The second hack, not everybody has a, a French press either. These things are genius. Mason jars, pickling jars, jam jars, whatever you wanna use. Okay, I've got cold milk in here. Again, almond milk. I'm just gonna do this. This is a great job for the kids. They can't drink coffee, but they don't know what they're doing. You just give them this and say, here you go, shake this up till it's no longer a lot of milk in there. It doesn't take that long. And like I said, it's not totally a vigorous activity. Um, if you've got arthritis or something, I don't know, kick it around on the living room floor. I don't know, a couple times. So you're gonna shake that up, shake that up. And within a matter of just a minute maybe, you're gonna get about a quarter inch to a half an inch of froth on the top of this. I'm actually surprised I'm not out of breath yet. All right. So I'm gonna do the same thing and use that little orange spoon to pour the milk through. And then beautiful froth on there. Nice and thick, big aerated bubbles. So fun. Again, the longer that you shake that stuff up, the more of that froth you're gonna get. Again, I'm gonna take some cinnamon and use my microplane. That's this little guy here. I use this for everything. Garlic, mincing onions, everything. And I'm gonna pop a straw in that puppy and you have an iced latte. Now, I did say vanilla and dirty chai earlier as well. So if you're gonna do something like that, okay, I'm gonna do a hot one. We're gonna go ahead and do that one third, two third. So we're gonna do one third of the hot coffee, okay, two, two thirds of that cream, milk base or however that is that you wanna put in there. I'm gonna stop there, okay? And this is where I'm gonna add my flavors. Hi, Becky. Hi, Bill. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining me, guys. So this is uh, my third rendition. The, for those of you guys that may have missed it, we have shown you how to froth some milk in this guy here uh, in a French press very quickly. We warmed up the milk very fast and then just kind of pumped that for very few, 30 seconds maybe and you get about a half to half milk to half froth ratio. Second tip I showed you guys was to be able to do that frothing the milk in a mason jar for those of you who don't have a French press or an espresso machine with a frother, okay? Or one of those fancy little battery operated doodads. Um, and then I also showed as a kitchen hack, freezing uh, some leftover espresso into ice cube trays. So that when you want to have an iced coffee, you can have an iced coffee all the way through till you're done, till the very bottom, and it's not going to be watered down. It's a genius idea. Some people want it watered down because by the time you get to the bottom, you're all shaky and jittery. Not me. I love it. So I'm um, going to move this over here. 
So now at this point, after you've done the coffee or the espresso, for the hot one or cold either way, is where you're gonna add some flavor. So you're gonna add maybe some vanilla, some almond, uh, an extract if you want. So I use about an eighth of a teaspoon of, let's say this, I think this is vanilla extract in there. I can also use um, some flavored syrup or in a previous blog post a couple weeks ago, I talked about simple syrups. This would be a great time to use a simple syrup in a coffee and you can do something like a London Fog with tea, add some you know, lavender or Earl Grey flavoring of a simple syrup, some crazy stuff that you can do, some uh, strawberry, rosemary flavors. This happens to be raspberry. I love cherry, I don't know why I have raspberry, but I do. Now I had talked earlier that one of my favorite things is a dirty chai latte. So um, some of you know that I have been working very hard on a spice line and um, it is called Tea Arena Global Spices. And one of the spices that I have is a vanilla masala chai blend. Um, and I have made it to my liking, uh, which has a lot of flavor to it. Um, it's not very sweet, but um, it's sweeter. I have two versions, one that's non-vanilla, so it's just a masala chai tea blend, and one vanilla masala chai tea blend. I'm gonna use the vanilla one for this particular recipe, and I'm just gonna use a tablespoon of that to this espresso that I made. And we're just gonna stir that up. And it contains an instant black tea, so it does go ahead and melt in there with cold or hot water. Um, you don't have to steep it with tea leaves. All right, so at this point now, it's the masala, vanilla masala chai tea, dirty chai tea. It's a lot, that's a lot to ask for. So it's a good thing you're making it at home because for me to try to blurt that out to someone in a window would be a little impossible. So now after that, you can go ahead and add that frog milk right on top. Okay, add a little more cream there. There we go, and a lot of that is just sitting on the top there. There we go, look at that. So fun, so pretty, and again, my masala has a little bit of cinnamon in it. My, my masala chai tea, it's got some black or some white pepper in it. So I could put a little bit of that if I wanted. So that is my rendition of a dirty chai tea latte. So thank you so much for joining me today. Again, just to let you know, this was a latte fun. We did some ice lattes, some hot lattes. Told you you could use espresso, espresso powder, make your coffee really strong. It's about a one-third to two-thirds ratio. Um, oh, thanks, Trish. Trish said she made a latte right along with us today, so hopefully that turned out for you. It should be pretty delicious on a nice cold day today. Um, you can add flavoring in between that uh, filling your milk full uh, and the espresso that you use and then you top it with your froth that you made either with your espresso machine frother or like I showed you the French press method or the mason jar method. Now the French press method is going to give you a lot thicker froth and a lot more of it just because of that pressure that's in there versus the mason jar but you're still going to get what you're looking for um, and it's going to be just like store quality but at home and you can make it as flavorful as you want. You can use decaf if you want to just to get a fun drink through the day um, and that's about it. So Tune in again, I'll be letting you guys know when I'm doing another Jessica's Kitchen Tips, Tricks, and Hacks, hopefully in the next couple of days. Please also check my website out, jessicatearena.com. Um, yes, Karen, you can use rice milk. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, check my recipe, jessicatearena.com, in the next couple days. I am going to do a Zoom cooking demo, a Zoom live cooking demo for anyone who would like to participate and cook along with me. It's something I'm not able to do right now. I can't host cooking classes in other kitchens. I can't come to your home right now and do cooking lessons or big group sessions. So I'm gonna do it from my home along with you guys if you're interested. So I'll send out some information, let me know. I'm planning on next Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. so that you guys can make a dinner for you and your family and have it done. 
Uh, and you'll do it right along with me. We can ask questions, we'll be interactive. It'll be so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to doing this again, you guys. Have a wonderful afternoon. Stay safe, be happy, wash your hands, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much, guys, for your time.